police monitored everybody going down. They didn't recognize she was a woman or didn't want to. I don't know. And she finally makes it down, and she comes straight in past Laustown, which is what they call Klondike City, on the other side of the uh, the river from Dawson. And that's where people who didn't couldn't afford Dawson went to. Laustown. Laustown. That is the yeah. most uh, horrible name you can, I mean, there's, it's... Well, it isn't complimentary, It's not right? complimentary. No, it isn't complimentary. <laughs> but then you get into Dawson, and Dawson itself is, is kind of interesting. You know, I mean, you, the streets are absolutely shoulder to shoulder with miners and, and, and gamblers and businessmen from all parts of North America. They're gravitating. Remember, this was just at the end of a depression. Yeah. So this kind of turns things around. And Dawson City, of course, is one of the great recipients. And I mean, this shot here shows the, the boats lined up on the shore. Yeah. The town is, is booming and sure. bustling. Uh, yeah. The stern wheelers are, I mean, well, we already mentioned a couple yeah. of stern wheeler captains. They were gung ho. Yeah. Oh, sure they were. And downtown Front Street was Dawson's uh, sort of main attraction. Sure. Sure, and uh, so Front Street, is. this is how it would have looked, and this was the main street in Dawson. If you examine all the photos that come out of Dawson, and you remember, this is a big, big town. This is the glittering capital of the, of the northern part of the world. There's yeah. really nothing can touch it, Mike. And here's some of the creeks, you see. Here's, here's one of the creeks, and this is probably, I think, uh, Bonanza Creek. And Bonanza That's Creek is... That's the cabin is, 20 above. So yeah. that was 20 above where the gold was first yeah. found? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so then these guys are all going to be working at sure. that claim. Sure. And this next one is uh, how many below? That's uh, 12 below. 12 below? That's 12 below in Bonanza. And the other one's 20 above, I think, on Dominion Creek. Yeah. But this is how the claims would have looked, taken at the time by the various photographers in Dawson City. And there were a number of them, Mike, yeah. a lot of different photographers. So into this environment walks uh, Kate Rockwell, who's not yet attained her... Uh, her reputation as Klondike Kate. No, she's one of a number of dancers who come into Dawson City. And, you know, uh, she came in on, a, on the arm of a guy who was kind of interesting, a guy called Alex Pantages. And the Pantages family are still in Vancouver. Very the well known. Pantages Theater, I've right, heard of that. That's sure. right, He became a, a theater mogul. But he wasn't at the time. He was a young Greek Im immigrant, great deal of charm. Uh, women were attracted mm -hmm. to him. At this time, too, that Kate Rockwell was, was actually engaged to a guy called Danny Allman. And Danny Allman had been uh, in a minstrel troupe back in New York State, and they were engaged, and he was coming up to see her. Unfortunately, he stops in Vancouver, catches some, some plague or some, something that, that causes his demise immediately, overnight. And waiting for, of course, is, is Alex Pantages. And uh, he, with his, with his ability to, to promote, promotes her in, in, in a grand style. And now she, she, becomes she is a, a figure unto herself, as you already pointed out, quite, quite uh, beautiful, oh, yeah. uh, quite statuesque, and she makes her mark in oh. this place. Oh, indeed she does. She dances on the stage of the, old, of the old Orpheum, and this is a shot of the Orpheum. Doesn't look very grand by today's standards, but in Dawson City, that was something. And you look up and, and around the floor of the Orpheum, and this is a masquerade ball, but mm -hmm. you can see these, these various boxes up there, and these were where the people who could really afford to, uh, to uh, sit in the boxes and watch the show down below. So what does she do? She's a dance hall girl? Yeah, she's, she's a dance hall girl. She sings songs, and, uh, and this is a, a kind of a full shot of one of, her, one of her costumes that she would have worn, and this may have been taken by Pantages. I can't trace it down. Quite possibly it was. She's about 18 years old at this time. And she has some competition, Mike. Yeah. Uh, she has Diamond Tooth Gertie. Uh, she has Gussie. Diamond Tooth Gertie. Yeah. You can't go too quickly over these. They're yeah. wonderful names. Yeah. Well, Diamond Tooth Gertie was known of that because she had a, a diamond right set in one of her front teeth, which made her quite quite unusual, but really didn't come up to the class of, of, uh, of Kate Rockwell. Now, I mean, what do you pay stars like her in these days? Well, let's, let's look at the wages, Mike. Wages were about, um, for a good miner up there, um, just a few dollars a day varied how good the mine was. Uh, in, in, the, in the United States, stateside or Canada, uh, you would get about a dollar fifty a day. She was making about thirty thousand dollars a year. You do your old multiplication times forty, and you've got one point two million two million dollars yeah. a year she's yeah. making. Yeah, staggering. And that's just base salary, I take it. That's right. And she and Pantages, according to her memoirs were going to get married and they were partners, equal partners and so on. And that, that may indeed be the case. I won't question that. And uh, so she, she makes all sorts of money and she makes it by unusual ways. She does no, she's no longer a come on girl, but when she dances and when she sings, and remember, this is a woman who stopped traffic in Dawson City. When she walked down the street, 
men just stood and looked at her, most, first of all, because there weren't many women in Dawson City at that time. There were some, but not many. And she was so striking with, the, with her kind of her red gold blonde hair. And uh, also, they, uh, they tended to throw their hats in the air and cheer when she came by. Now, this, this would kind of turn their head a little bit if you're a young I, I, woman. I would be impressed. I would uh, begin uh, to strut if that 19. was the... No, it's, I mean, she uh, a, uh, uh, a woman of ill repute, or was she had a good reputation here? No, I, I think she, uh, she, she, there's probably not much doubt that, that she and Pantages were lovers, but, but she had a good reputation. She was not uh, from the, the back streets of, of Dawson, so that... Um, so she was. So she these was, people actually, the miners really must have held her in esteem. Oh sure, she was the first pinup girl in that area, which is interesting, you know, because they had pinup girls in the 1890s and 1900s, not so much anymore, but but certainly she was one of them. She must have attracted some devotees. Oh, of course she did. And what happened, of course, she had all sorts of ways to get extra money. They'd throw when she sang and when she danced, they would throw nuggets onto the stage. The occasional careless or drunk miner would throw a whole would throw a whole bunch of gold onto it in the, in the form of a gold poke, which is a leather sack containing gold. That was hers once it hit the stage. And she would wander around <laughs> circulating with the miners at the various tables after, not as a come on girl, but she would have a bracelet which would have, uh, we'll say, four or five double eagles in it, Mike, which is a $20 gold piece. Yeah. But one of the places would be empty. It'd be vacant. Somebody said, oh, my dear, you've, you've missed that. And they'd, they'd put a $20 gold piece in there. She'd also have a belt on. This is common yeah. with, the, with, the, with the dance hall queens. They would have a belt there with $20 gold pieces. want to show you a $20 gold piece. I mean, this, this is just, this, oh, don't drop it. It'll bruise. <laughs> now, these are, these are gold pieces. Yeah, and this, are... is, this is what would be in her belt? This would be in her belt. She would probably have 20 of those in her belt. Look at that. And she would have one of them missing, or perhaps two, yeah. one on either side, so they couldn't see the other side, you see. Yeah. And they would, she would get these replaced each night. Well, isn't that a spectacular yeah. find? I can't find the belt. Love to find one from my collection. I'm so you can find the gold so. anywhere, but you can't yeah. find the belt. So what happens, Mike, is Dawson is a glittering, glittering part of the North for about three years. But finally, just after the turn of the century, it starts to slip. And it does start to slip, I think, rather, rather significantly. So they decide that they will look for other, for other pastures and better pastures, Mike. Okay. Let's take a break here. Be back in just a second to continue. Listen to this. Makes such a lovely sound, doesn't it? We'll continue our discussion of uh, Klondike Kate right after these words. Don't go away. Welcome back to Gold Trails. As we were saying, the uh, digging started to get a little thin on the surface, but uh, that's why they had one of these buckets around, yeah. Bill. This is for high-grade ore, high-grade... Well, high-grade uh, gravel, actually. Yeah. Ore is different. And what, they, what happened is they'd put this in the bottom of the shaft when they were on bedrock, break up the bedrock, Mike, with yeah. a pick and a sh shovel and so on, and shovel it and then whisk it in to make sure all that gold that, si that sifts down into the, into the crevices and cracks in bedrock is in here and not outside. That's why. To That's make why sure it's, it's like, a dust, like a dustbin and Precisely. it would be gold dust that they're chasing. Gold dustbin. And why the size? Because gold was too heavy and to make it bigger would be bad? Or were they working in cramped quarters when they They were started? working in pretty cramped quarters in many instances. Sometimes they had to crawl out. Depends. It was per permafrost too, though, Mike. So. Well, that, these pictures that we're looking at right here, this yeah. is uh, these are photos of the deep operation. Yeah. How, what are they having to do now? Well, this one on Dominion Creek means they have to go down. The shaft may go down 60 or 70 feet. They're in permafrost, and the, the old shallow diggings are gone. So you can see they're using less, fewer miners. The price uh, they're paying the miners has gone from $10 a day down to $5 a day. And uh, the next one, which is on Bonanza Creek, which was one of the great creeks of the, of the Yukon is the same sort of operation. They're now going to, you know, you can see all the, all the apparatus there, fewer miners on the surface, some yeah. down below, and this is what was happening. So the, the vast bulk of the miners were disappearing from Dawson, and the result was Dawson was going downhill. Who notices this right off the mark? Yeah. Well, it's our friend Alex Pantages. He's very, very sharp. He's got to move. With him goes Klondike Kate. And where they, do they head to? Where, well, what's they, the, what's there? Because there's not another gold rush to go to at this stage uh, of the game. They head to an, an old city which had treated them quite well, Seattle. But they part company there. She thinks temporarily. I guess he doesn't. He starts a theater there with a vaudeville show. She goes to Victoria and buys a little theater for $350, sells it for $1,500, is going back to join him when she finds out that he has married a vaudeville uh, uh, girl uh, which was in his, uh, in his theater. 
Uh, she's had several broken hearts. I mean, yeah. remember the way back when, when she was 16, there was yeah. a broken heart, another yeah. broken heart from the almond guy. Yeah. I mean, is she used to broken hearts? Well, this was a real broken heart. This was, I, when you read her, her memoirs, this was the one that really did break her heart. So she goes back to Dawson, hoping to recoup. She comes back to Dawson. Now, here's what the Monte Carlo looked like in 1899. It was heyday. That's when it was right. Hopping. Crowds on the streets. Dawson is booming. She comes back to this Dawson, and this is the Dawson of 1904, 1905. And then Not this, many this, people on the street. Well, might. this is an interesting shot anyway, because this is at midnight on the 1st of July. That's right. This is the midnight sun sure, happening here. Sure, but there's still any other year in 1899, 1900, it would have been packed. So she has to leave Dawson, and her fortunes go downhill from there. She goes back to Seattle, stakes her mother. Her mother actually launches a very successful real estate business. She goes off to a little place called Bend, Oregon and takes $3,500. All she's got left, Mike, that's all she's got in the world. Pawns her jewelry, pawns her gold. And this is after she was making yeah. 30000 a year plus all the gold nuggets and sure. gold double sure. eagles that she could carry. So she's down on her luck, no doubt about it. But she marries a young guy called Floyd Warner. And Floyd Warner is quite a few years younger, probably in his 20s. She's in her 30s when she marries him. This doesn't last long. And uh, after World War I, she married him in 1914. After World War I, he goes his own separate way. She goes her own way and tries a number of, number of different businesses. And despite her, her protestations to the opposite, she probably doesn't do very well. She goes to a meeting of the sourdoughs of the Yukon in 1931. And they, and they, this is to commemorate her, really. This is, this is their salute. She's sort of the to, guest speaker oh, in this one, is yeah, this right? she's not the guest speaker. She is the guest. Yeah. There's a difference. Right. And uh, so this is Klondike Kate. They're all o a lot older now. It's 45 years or 40 odd years since they were in the Klondike. She's a lot older. She's in her 60s. And somebody reads the account of this in a, in a, in a creek way up on the Klondike. And his name is Johnny Matson. Johnny Matson's an old Norwegian that had fallen in love with Klondike Kate Rockwell in about 1899. He was one of the people in the audience, and he, maybe through a double eagle. He was not in the audience. No? He read about it way up in the Yukon. He's 150 miles out in the, out in the creek in the he Yukon. He never got to see the creek. show. Oh, yeah. He never got there. He didn't take time out. And he reads about Klondike Kate, and he writes her a letter and says he wants to marry her. And she remembered this little Norwegian looking at her many, many years ago when she was the belle of, of, of Dawson City. So she actually meets him in Canada. And they, they decide to get married. And they do marry. They go to back, to the, back to the Yukon. She goes down the then deserted streets of, of Dawson and goes back in the, uh, in the Savoy, which was the one of the places she danced at, and it's totally empty. And she's left there with her memories. Then she goes back, and they spend some time together. She goes back to the States, lives in Bend, Oregon. He comes down and sees her, or she goes up once every year. Both of them are quite elderly by now. And finally, you know, uh, she gets some recognition in her, in her old, old age, Mike, and finally passes on, and I think it was 1954, early 1950s. What an amazing story. I yeah. mean, uh, now, has she written her story? Is there a memoir? You said in her memoirs. Is there yeah. A, is yeah, there are many accounts of, of Klondike Kate, and some of them are at variance to each other. So you have to be very, very careful. I think she... Sh she shaded her, her age occasionally here and there. Well, but as she, you're allowed to do, yeah, if, uh, certainly you know. Are, certainly. certainly, there's a writer's license there. But, uh, you know, when you, when you read about all these fascinating characters, and of course Dawson City was that type of city. It drew those characters, as we mentioned before, and she was, I think, probably the most famous of them all. And there you go. Uh, with a broken heart from age 16, yeah. and uh, a world tour to start her off, her mm -hmm. mother taking her on this world tour. Yeah. And then Pantages and all the other and names. The Pantages family has done very well. That's a fascinating story. Yeah. And, she, and to think that uh, it ended with her watching all of those places where all her greatest moments were, sure. uh, were just uh, ramshackled uh, ghost town places. Precisely. Klondike Kate, last name again, Rockwell. Rockwell. Any relation to the Rockwell of uh, rocket ship fame or anything uh, like this? No. No. Klondike Kate Rockwell, the story of her today on Gold Trails and Ghost Towns. Join us again next time as we tell you more stories from uh, British Columbia, the Pacific Northwest, even to, to the Yukon's past. Bye-bye.
Introducing the Gold Trails and Ghost Towns series. Now you can revisit history whenever you choose and experience the Old West like it really was. This fascinating series features 12 videotapes, each containing three episodes from the Gold Trails and Ghost Town series that take you on a captivating journey through the rivers of time. Discover the hidden gems and the forgotten treasures as you travel through the peaks and valleys of days gone by. See how the West was really won. Follow the pioneers and the prospectors as they stake their claims through the interior of British Columbia. The good times and the bad, it's all here waiting for you to discover in the Gold Trails and Ghost Town series. Each tape is just $29.95. To order, use your visa or send a check to the Okanagan's very own CHBC. And for a complete description of each tape in the Gold Trails and Ghost Town series, visit us online at chbc.com. Order yours today.